Hello everybody and welcome to our today's Vardin webinar and uh, today we are here with Leif from the uh, R&D team or yes. development department. So Leif is working on, uh, currently hardly working on this MPR thing and that's related to migration as well. well and yeah, among other things and also I was like doing all the things when when it came to actually making Vardin 10. Yeah. And uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, basically three topics, so we could start my slides. So, first off, we will be talking about if you should migrate at all. So, one option to Vardin to 10 migration is to don't migrate at all. Yeah. And then we will be having an example of like a full migration. So, we will have a very small application, but you will kind of see the things that you will need to do. Yeah, what it takes and th some things to look out for and so on. Yeah, and some tips how you can do it easily. Yeah. And then we will be talking about this mysterious MBR in the end. And uh, But let's go straight to the topic and start with the don't migrate option or, or why you should migrate. Yeah. So that's kind of one of the best strategies to don't migrate at all because yeah, it's, it's really easy. Yeah. You have it already done, basically. Yeah. But there are some good reasons why you should migrate. Of course there is. So there is some new in Vardin 10. Yeah. Um, like, there's actually lots of new, because we have changed lots of things. But like, the reasons why, why you might want to migrate is first of that, that like, uh, with Vardin 10, it's much easier to integrate with, uh, with your front-end developers. Yeah. So you can give them much more control over things. Yeah. In, instead of like with, with for instance, Vardin 8, it's like they, they just do the CSS things maybe and, and that's all. But then whenever they need some extra like CSS classes or something in the actual yeah. thing that's in the browser, then they might need help from a Java developer. Yeah. So with Vardin 10, we have this new template, which is based on Polymer templates. And it's basically just plain HTML you can mix yeah. a, like JavaScript directly there. And you can you also have this more lower level element API in, yeah. the, in the Java side as well. So you can also like fine tune something from the Java code directly without doing any quit magic there. Yeah, <clears throat> and also with the template, like you can even make your template so that they work on their own without any any Java server running at all. So in that way you, you can have them like completely standalone and then only, only the data comes from the server. And if no server is available, there's just some Example data there instead. Yeah, and all the components we have basically renewed all those. Yeah, I wouldn't say yet that they are better than the old ones. There are still some features missing, but they are getting there, and they are at least like designed from ground up to like today's standards. So yes, they they are better in some ways, but still some catching up in other areas. Yeah. So and for instance, mobile friendliness is, is one thing that is much better with the new components because they are actually desi designed in a decade when people use touch screens. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe the like the biggest point on choosing one in ten today is that it's kind of that's where all our investment is currently going. So yeah. all, all the all the new things that we come up with here and all the all the, like main resources go now to the Vardin ten branch. Yeah. At this moment. V Vardin eight still gets some attention, but that's mostly based on on like what people are asking for and maybe even making patches on yeah. their own. Yeah. But then like all the big like yeah. our strategic vision, so to say, is based yeah. on continuing. And, all, and also Vardin yeah. seven is still getting some Love actually. So some it's still, love, yeah, it's, but uh, it's, it's still it's still maintained. So if there are some critical bucket bugs, we will be fixing those. And yeah, and uh, yeah, well. But then why not to migrate? Yeah. <coughs> so I mean, you don't have to migrate. It's like corresponding to to the situation with Java right now. Like I guess very many are still using Java eight. Yeah. yeah, I think I saw some statistics about those who are using Vardin, Vardin environment like Vardin plugin in Eclipse, I think it was like 85% or something that yeah. use, use Vardin, uh, no, Java, 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 Java 8. 8. It's really difficult yeah. when you saw Java 8 and Vardin yeah. 8 and, and yeah. And there was still like Java 7 users quite a lot and less like Java 9 and Java 10 users. Yeah, but it's still kind of the same situation like with Java that you don't have to update if you don't want to or you can just do it later or maybe like keep your current 
application on eight yeah. and then when you create a new application you use ten with that. Yeah. And if it works, don't fix it. So yep. what, what, in, what in eight applications, what in seven applications, they might be working very well for you if it doesn't bring you any value to upgrade, why yeah. upgrade? If you're just making having it like in a maintenance mode, then absolutely no, don't don't go yeah, there. Definitely. What in then is what in eight is still getting like security patches if you have like a public facing web application, then you need to have it like yeah. secured, but you are still getting those both for Vardin 7 and for Vardin 8 still a long time. Yeah, well, not so long time anymore for 7, but 8 is still like until yeah. 2022. Yeah, and of course, if you if you have a big application that you don't want to convert, you can of course buy a commercial support for us and then we will do the security patches for you if there appears some. Issues. Yeah, well, that's all. Always an option, at least yeah. for some customers. And, and, and more for many customers, that's actually the cheapest option. If you have a large application and it doesn't make sense to do the migration, then... That might be. Yeah. But then you also, like, you are, so to say, stuck in the old way. So, for instance, yeah. front-end integration is something that you will miss out on. Yeah. And also, there are certain features that are still missing from what then. So, there is quite a lot of, like... Some add-ons, for example, that are not yeah, like, well, not, lo lo not lots of add-ons have, yeah. have not yet been updated. Although they might be an, yeah. a web component that can be yeah. quite easily integrated. Drag, drag and drop is quite often used in a business applications, and it's still not there. Yeah. It's coming, I guess, in what in something. There's no specific plans for drag and drop yet. Okay. But for instance, tree grid is really something that lots of lots of applications use, and that will, unless something bad happens, that will be involved in 12, which is yeah. out like end of this year. Yeah. And, yeah, oh, that's basically about about the kind of reasons why to migrate and when to migrate. So yeah. for some, it might make sense to kind of wait for a couple of years still and then do the migration and maybe go directly to Vardin in 27 or something. Something, yeah. <laughs> And for some, it might make sense to do it today. Yeah. And uh, to do the migration, there is kind of a big bang strategy. So kind of do the, all the migration at once. So basically, you will write the UI layer again. Yeah. The thing there is that there's like, you can't just like that, keep like one part of your application using Vardin 7 or 8 and the other using 10. But so you kind of need to get it all done before you can actually without compromises, release a new version of your application. Yeah, yeah. so with Vardin 8 we had these uh, legacy packages for Vardin 7 and yeah. then you could mix and match Vardin applications, yeah. like different versions, but that's not that trivial with this big upgrade that we yeah, did no, with Vardin Yeah, no, because the shift to web components and so yeah. on, it's, it's not really practical. Yeah, but for that we have actually one demo yeah. here. So, I did this kind of a tutorial a couple of years ago for new Vardin developers and there we are building kind of a... A couple of years ago, you mean like for Vardin 6? Yeah, <laughs> well, a couple of years ago. <laughs> and now we will try to upgrade this into Vardin 10. And we will also show kind of uh, some strategies how to do that. So there are a couple of kind of things how you can make it look easier. Yeah. So this is now a Vardin 8 application? Yeah. so if we look at it running, it should be running on localhost 880. So we have the application, so it's basically listing all the customers that we have. Then we can edit those and save them. You can see the changes and then you can search for all all sense, for example. And very, very basic application. Yeah, but it's, it still shows like all the basic things that go into a Vardin application. Yeah. So. We will be transforming this into body then application. Yep. And uh, what's the first task that I should do? Uh, the first thing we need to do, I guess, is to update the dependencies. You can actually, like, while migrating, you can still have both uh, body 8 and body 10 dependencies in your application because there's no, like, class path conflicts in that way. Yeah. But still, like, the main entry point, like the, the servlet, only one of those can be active at a time, so you still can't run the old code. Yeah, but, but we only have one bomb. Vardin bomb is still the Vardin bomb. This is still the same Vardin bomb, yeah, but yeah. The, like, the actual dependencies are changing. So yeah, we can just... Let's reuse this. Yeah, for now. For now, and let's make it Vardin 8 version. And uh, let's fix these dependencies that are getting the version from yeah. the bomb currently. So this way we will kind of fix the Vardin 
eight versions to the latest that we have yeah. here. Yeah, we will never actually run it with this setup. It's just to to avoid lots of compilation errors while we are while we are doing yeah. things. And uh, for Vadim Bomb, there we will be actually using uh, ten. What's the latest? Ten o three, I think. No, yeah. actually four was out just like beginning of this week. But let's take three because that's the one we have tested with. Yeah. And uh, then, then you, then you need to add or remove. You need to do a couple of things in your bomb. So like new bomb version, yes, and then uh, at some point remove old Maven plugin, one in Maven plugin, yeah. and or actually just update the version. But it also has different goals that you should use and so on. So you yeah. So this is so simple process that it actually doesn't have the one in Maven plugin at all. Oh, but okay. But what would you do with, if you if you would have like Vadin eight and Vadin then you will still need Maven plugin or you will still need like in Vadin eight you need the Maven plugin for for two things actually one is to compile the widget set if you use any add-ons and then the other is to compile the application theme yeah if you have a theme but in this simple application we we don't have any add-ons and we don't have a theme so we didn't need it. Yeah, and in Vardin 10 we still need the plugin to do... Yeah, it's it's like a completely new plugin with just the same name. What yeah. it does is that it handles transpilation, so that's to make new client-side features work in old browsers. It yeah. basically rewrites JavaScript to use only older JavaScript features. And then it does a minification of all the things, and then it bundles them together so that it's like one big file or bigger file to download instead of lots of small files yeah. because downloading lots of small files over the internet is relatively slow. Yeah, but the good thing about this is now that during the development time we will not need it at all. Yeah. And maybe even some uh, like inter internet applications where you don't need to think about the performance that much. You could ship it like that as well. You could, yeah. yeah. But it, it doesn't really hurt yeah. to have it. But we need some dependencies as well. So yeah. so now we only have the Vardin 8 dependencies. I yeah. have here actually a uh, project created with our starter. Yeah, so and the, the, the yeah. easiest way to also like get started with migrating is probably to go to vardin.com slash start and they just download the really simplest possible example application just to be able to pick the dependencies and the like, for instance, the Maven plugin and so on from that one. Yeah. So I will plagiate the stuff here. So I will get this Vardin core thing, Yeah. which contains... It contains Flow, which is the, the Java, Java component, like basic framework. And then it will also have all the components that yeah. are part of, of Vardin 10. So now we, it should now be possible to create like a new Vardin Vardin 10 class. I have actually a shortcut here, yep. like a template that I've made for Vardin views. So I will create it directly there now. So now I have a new view and yep. it contains a root. And because we added dependencies, we need to restart the jetty. But otherwise, we should now have uh, Vardin 10 running. You should there. maybe disable the Vardin server from, yeah. from 8 so, part also. So, so basically, now we are mapping Vardin 8 servlet directly to the root. So let's move that into Vardin 8, for example. And then because of the static resources in Vardin, we will also need to map it to Vardin URL. So this is where the widget set and team is coming from. Like that. Yeah. And now if we restart the server, we should have... Uh, I think it didn't restart. Now it says restart completed. Let's right. try again. Uh -huh. Nope. Well, let's restart the whole Jetty plugin then. Did I click save? <laughs> <laughs> I have been going on and off with different kind of ideas and in IntelliJ you don't need to save it at all. You just need to get off the context then it, then it comes for you. Okay, so now we have a one in 10 responding from the root yeah. and it contains this new view that I had there and, yeah. uh, and then we still have the old application running here. So now if it, if it would be a larger application and it would take maybe a couple of weeks, we could keep this old application running in a one ad address and you kind of keep it alive and get, get the business going on. They can still use the old version and then they can try the new version for some use that we have already implemented. Yeah. But we will Definitely want to migrate this all. So now we should get started with uh, some part of this application. Yeah. 
uh, I think one one good way of doing it is to first just start somewhere like I think here this is so simple application is just like the main UI that contains the the grid yeah, and, and the searching and then it's the the customer form with everything else yeah. so we can start just by with yeah. this form here yeah so let's just let's copy paste that into a different package and uh, let's actually do a copy without refactoring and fix the package and uh, then it should be dot data because we're right now oh. in the dot data okay well package or we should actually be let's, in, in let's the go there <laughs> all right yeah. you you should also be moved then yeah well we can leave it there but we want to get rid of all these old Vardin imports and replace basically these with the versions from Vardin flow. Yeah. So now we get lots of compilation errors that we need to do something about. Uh, I would actually, uh, form layout is one of the components that have changed. So uh, I wouldn't recommend using form layout here. Okay. Or should we just well, we see what it looks like yeah, so let's, we, let's so see we what it looks recognize like. the, the problems. Text field. Text field, yeah, easy. Then we have a native select. Yeah. And what to do that with that? Native select is not actually available, but you can use a combo box instead. Yeah. We should actually make a native select, but that's that's a different story. Yeah, so now we have two combo boxes again, but we will choose all, always the... The flow version. Yeah, and there is also no date field for There's no flow. date field, no. It, it's called date picker nowadays. But otherwise it works mostly the same. Yeah. So we will replace it with yeah. date picker. And button, button is, button is the, the button. Yeah. And then there is a binder. Binder is also the same, it just moved to a different package. Again, just to like make it possible for you to have both on the class path at the same time if you want to. Yeah. Or with NPR, which we will see later on. Yeah. And let's actually at this point, let's move this here as well, this new view. And let's call this... Uh, Let's call this main view. Yeah. So one thing that you don't typically have in a body 10 application is your own UI class. Instead, you kind of start from just your main view or, or something like that. So probably most of the, if you have lots of logic in your UI class, you probably want to move that to your main view instead, yeah. which is kind of the, the root of your application. And then we're also using horizontal layout there. Yeah, horizontal layout is the it's same. There. And then style names. Okay, we don't have the style constants yet, but they are in some pre-release at the moment. Yes. For, but, but the theme name is different, it's called... Uh, it's called Luma nowadays. Luma, Luma. But we will skip these parts in this exercise altogether. Setting click shortcuts, that, that's as well possible, but it's a bit, bit more trickier. At yeah, point. that's something we need to yeah. improve. But we actually have one compilation error here. Yeah. So at components, needs to go to add only. Yeah. And that's the same in all the different component container components, so like vertical layout, horizontal layout, and so on. Yeah. And with the text field first name, we also have some kind of like a minor minor feature missing, but we have focus, so it, it's doing almost the same thing, so. Yeah. First name focus. focus. Yeah. And then one more thing, to, and that's actually only about doing the update, let's comment it out at this point and then we could actually test this form yeah. alone yeah. easily by adding the root annotation here. Yeah, so we can take any component and just add a root annotation and then it will be available. Either you define the, the actual URL or, or then it comes by convention from the class name. Yeah, so now we should have a customer form available here. Yep. Ciao. And here we can see the new form layout and it's actually got two columns. So yeah. it's maybe better in this case to have just a simple vertical layout. Yeah. So the form layout, it lets you do like responsive forms. So like depending on the size of the screen, you get different layouts and so on. But let's just keep it really simple and, and as similar as possible to the previous yeah. one. Yeah. So there we go. So we basically have a form there. Yeah. So now we need to go to the more complex part. So the main UI, so where we are using this form. And uh, let's yeah. actually let's copy paste everything there. Copy all the except the except server. The server yeah. yeah. So let's copy paste everything here. Let's put it there. So we have 
uh, quite a lot of compilation errors. And uh, actually, we have an override here for yeah. the init method. So this is from the UI class in Vardin 8. So yep. this is the entry point that used to be in Vardin. Yeah. Vardin 8. Here we can instead use the constructor of of main view yeah. and do the same thing. So we'll be basically doing this. And uh, actually now we have an import to Vardin 8 vertical layout here, but that's yeah. this, is the, this is the main layout and we are actually extending from vertical layout. So, yeah, so we, we don't can, need that one at all. We can actually get rid of the layout completely and then see what's what's the next, next issue that we will have. Uh, we let's have actually also these imports. So let's fix the imports as well. Yeah, so remove all, them all and then add. All Vardin, old Vardin imports yeah. and then go with flow versions. Yeah. Again, greed. Greed works mostly the same, at least in this simple yeah. example. Value change mode, should we leave that out for now? Or no, we can use eager instead. Lace yeah. is something that will be there in a while, but not yet implemented. Ho hopefully soon. I'm yep. missing it a lot. Yeah, I know. And then we have a button. Yep. And in button we are actually using font awesome, but that's not available by default anymore. So there we will need to use Vardin icons. Yeah. And from there we will get O something, I think is a good O something. Close circle O. Close circle O, yeah, that's and the one. Create. Create a yeah. So, so what actually happens here also is that one thing you couldn't do in Vardin Eight, for instance, is that you could add, couldn't add a component as the contents of the button. Yeah. But now, what what this Vardin icon close circle create does is that it creates an icon component that you just add as a child of the button. Yeah. Then we don't have the concept of description anymore. That used to be like a very traditional feature from even from Millstone era, like Vardin Vardin yeah. three, but it's no more there. But we can use native feature here. We can use native feature. Yeah. So we can go to the low level element API. Yeah, so that will then, we will do a tooltip in the way the browser does tooltips instead of the way. Yeah, so it's called title attribute. And we will just put it there. So now the browser shows the native, native tooltip. You yeah. cannot use any HTML there like you could use with the previous versions with of Arden, but Yeah, but instead, for instance, accessibility is better yeah. and so on. Yeah, basically the same concept still. Yeah. Then CSS layout, what should I do with CSS layouts? Yeah. There is no such a component anymore. There's no such component per se, but CSS layout, what it is in Arden 8, it's just a div element, so we can yeah. use the div component so instead. So we could have div here. Yeah. Or then we can go even simpler because we are use, we are kind of styling it here and we don't have this this layout component group still in Vardin yeah. 10, so we could maybe go with the horizontal layout here. We could do that as well, yeah. Vardin flow horizontal layout like there and add components is add. And we don't have that style name, but we, we can just set the we can set the spacing, spacing there. Because what that old style name does is like exactly show them beside each other and without any spacing. Yeah. So we just set that one to false and then they will be really close to each other. Yeah. And then we have another horizontal layout. That one is probably fine as that is. is. Yeah. That, that just, yeah. I think it's just IntelliJ, uh, no, not NetBeans, NetBeans is, which is having some issues, but we have an issue there with the... Six set expand ratio. Yeah. So instead, um, vertical layout and horizontal layout are now based on a new browser feature named Flexbox. And to make that clear and also make it so that someone who is familiar with that can find anything, we are now using the like terminology from there, so it's flex grow instead of expand ratio and so on. Yeah, but here we will need to also set the height yeah. of the main and also from this actual vertical layout. Actually, we're also doing main set size full, so that one wouldn't be needed, but but okay. the, this is probably the main view itself. Yeah. And uh, layout, we already removed that, but we need to add the components to add directly to. there. And also the method is simply add. Yeah. All right. Was that all the compiler? No, set content is not needed anymore because this is the content. Yeah. And that's it. That's pretty much it. And for some reason, 
this is still teasing us. Aha, so we have the old form here. Yeah, okay, we should use the new one, of course. Yeah, so it's the customer form from the same package. Yep, yeah. and now with that's no done. red anymore. Yeah. Everything done, let's try Everything it. done, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to figure out, could it be this easy? Yeah, all right. So we should have now the main view on the root. And uh, we have the new version here. Yep. Again, let's see if the filtering works. All yep. Seems to edit. get exactly the same. Editing. Patterns. We didn't. New form. We commented out the. Ah. The, that's true. That part. So we, we need to uncomment that, and then we can also say. No, everything might even work. Yeah. Call him Matti. Right there. Yep, it works. Okay. So, so very very simple trivial example, but it, you could still kind of get the basic steps that you need to do. Yeah. In a in a in a very simple conversion, and uh, we could still finish this a bit by getting rid of the. Yeah, we can remove all the eight stuff all, now. All the body eight dependencies all together like there. Yeah. We can and also get rid of the property if we want. And uh, then we can. Then we need to remove those classes also. Classes as well. Perfect. And that's it. That's basically. Yep. Easy. Easy. But it could be easier if you had a lot of screens. Then, then you would still need to have like the old version running, and then tell to your tell tell, tell to your fellows that oh, no 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 I haven't migrated that yet. That you need to use the old version for doing that functionality. Yeah, or, or then you do not deploy the partially migrated version because it before yeah. it's done. Yeah, but for that we will come later. Yeah. Uh, so this is basically what we saw already. So the migration is quite easy to do because. All the concepts are same. Yeah, the, the structure Mo most is the of same. the code is the same still. Yeah, and there's like the details are the same, and like for instance, binder and data provider that we added in Wadin eight, yeah. those are also exactly the same. Yeah. There's like, well, if you use Wadin seven and and use container for instance, then yeah, then, then you will need. To, then you have even more work there. Then, then you need to restructure how how you handle data also, yeah. but otherwise it's. It's mostly just about the components and nothing else. Yeah. There are big changes in the build script, so you will yeah, need to change, so. change the dependencies. They are completely different ones. Yeah. The Maven, what well, Maven plugin, that's also like a, it's the same name but different goals, so you will need to adjust that for new. Yeah. New, and for that, the build. best way is to just take example project from, for instance, again, Vadim.com slash yeah. start. Yeah. Components, there, there was some changes, for example, in uh, vertical layouts, they, they are like a bit more closer to the like native web part, so you will be using like yeah. flex, flex grow yeah, but, but, instead but of it's, expand ratios, but... It's only the names that have changed yeah. still, like you, you are still not, you're still not doing HTML coding, even though, yeah. even though some of the names are inspired from, from, from that stuff. Yeah. And if you have custom layouts, you will be using the Polymer templates, which are much more powerful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, some some missing components, for example, label is kind of missing. Label is, no, there's a label there, but, but it, it's, it's totally a different, different label. Kind of la label. Because again, we are aligning with yeah. how things work in HTML. So, so it's actually the label tag that... Yeah. yeah, and the label tag, that's what you have to show the name of a text yeah. field or something. So instead, in most cases, you would want to use either span, which is like the span element, yeah. and then there's also a component named text, which is only like the text, text and nothing node. else. Text node, not any. Yeah. Element. Yeah. Yeah. And in general, yeah, many of the APIs, they, and we are just kind of coming closer to the web. Closer to the web, but still, still letting you do everything in Java. Yeah. And then navigation, we, this application didn't have pretty much no navigation at all, or it only contains kind of uh, different compos components that yeah. were used there. But, but we, we didn't, didn't use Navigator, yeah, for instance. To do the deep linking. Yeah. Yeah. So if you used, like... ...inspired by how you previously did it with Spring or CDI yeah. with Vardin. So you just have your view class and then you add an annotation to it saying that, hey, this should be something that the user can navigate to. 
Yeah. But now this also works like without any spring or CDI or anything. Yeah. That was really nice last week actually in the webinar we didn't need to, previously we did that kind of multiple annotations there now we only need the root for yeah. the basic spring view and then it automatically becomes like a spring managed bean even though the root annotation is exactly the same that you will use with the plain servlet yeah. project. That's true. Though sometimes you might still for instance want to add a UI scope annotation or something yeah. like that but that's then a completely different story. Yeah. There is quite a lot of like small details that that's related to the changes, but yeah. those are actually listed in the Vardin.com slash docs. So you can go there and get a chapter called migrating to Vardin 8, migrating from <laughs> Vardin 8 to Vardin 10, yeah. and uh, see all the details there. And if there is something missing, just don't hesitate to propose some enhancements to the documentation page. But then we have this thing called NPR. NPR, that's yeah. magic. Yeah. So, NPR, it's multi-platform runtime. Yes, yeah. you got it right the first time. Yeah, that, that, that was actually really weird because you were talking about my NPR will solve everything when we, when we were talk, talking about the release of Vardin 10. So, NPR is a tool to help this migration. Yeah. So, it's basically kind of the new legacy package that we had for Vardin 7, but it's kind of more advanced and it, it's it, still it, very different. Yeah, it, it's kind of the, the new legacy package, but like it, it's a quite big investment for us to actually hook things up in a way that is really smooth. And that's also one part of why this is part of the commercial packages. So you need a Vardin, Vardin subscription to, to, to use these. Yeah. But then if you have a huge application, what this does is that it lets you migrate just like one part at a time so you can like have old and new view implementations side by side in the same application and that's that's really really great if you have a big application yeah and also it helps you in a sense that if some Vardin add-on is not yet available in Vardin 10 you can still use that add-on that's also true NPR. yeah, yeah for, for instance as a kind of extreme example one of our most complicated add-ons, so the spreadsheet. That's that, still not available for Vardin 10, but you can use it in Vardin 10 application using NPR. Yeah. When NPR is out, because it's not out yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you are, Minor detail. you are working on... Yeah, we, 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 are really, we, we are really getting close to, to beta release, so we are doing the hopefully final usability tests and those kinds of things, like polishing things and, and just making sure that everything is the way we want it to be and, and it's actually useful for yeah. for actual applications. So we should have beta uh, out in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, the first time I heard about this one in multi-platform runtime, then I thought that what, what makes it different from having an iframe in your one in 10 application and having one in eight application there, but... Yeah, that, that, that's that's one thing you could do, though it, it, has, it has a bunch of, of limitations if you do it that way. So for instance, you would have two different communication channels, which means overhead, but it also means, for instance, that if you have some what is seven or eight code that calls to what in 10 code, then UI get current wouldn't work the right way because when you're handling a what in eight request, then there's nothing that knows about what in 10 UI yeah. and so on. So with a lot of like UI access magic and push, it could kind of work, but it would kind be of. very complicated. Yeah. So, so it's like a fully integrated solution and yeah. And there is even some navigator integration though. So. For instance, yeah. yeah. Actually one thing also like again, drawback with using just an iframe is that if you show a pop-up window, like a Vardin 8 notification or something, then that one can't go outside the boundaries of the iframe, yeah. which would be quite restrictive if you have yeah, some so navigation menu or something. For there. example, in our own example here, if we would use this, where is my mouse? There. Yeah. If you would use this here and have a notification coming from this form, it would be only shown here. Yeah, the notification Even though it was kind of be corner. centered, it yeah. would still be there. Yeah, so that that's kind of the, the things that, that we can solve by doing quite complicated like integration, like sharing communication channels and, and doing really seamless yeah. embedding and so on. Before going to questions, uh, we have one example actually. Yeah, a really quick example of that also. Uh, so we have another other address book application here. And yeah. this is now using NPR. Yeah, so this is now Avadin 
or originally a Wadi 7 application. Yeah. But then we took the we took actually the same like uh, main layout that we had from that we already did once, but we're using that together with the the contact form from the seven version. So yeah. here we have like sure. regular Wadi 10 part, the thing yeah. we already implemented once. Pretty much the same that we had. Yeah. But then if we open the form, we can that see part that. there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now because we haven't done anything about the theme, so we actually get the like default grayish background color from from the Valo theme and the buttons and everything are styled like Valo. So this is just kind live. of a rude rude example of how it can work. Yeah. But with some CSS, you can make it look pretty much the same. And yeah, because both Valo and and the new Luma themes are like parameterized, so you can just like say that this is the color should, that should be used and then all the yeah. parts use the same color. Yeah, so with this NPR you can have like, if you have like a hundred of different views in your big big application, then you can have some implemented with Vardin 8 or 7 yeah. and some with Vardin 10 and yeah. they can all interact with each other. Yeah, or maybe just like, seamless. Maybe, maybe, maybe just like start out with with like only what in, old what in seven or eight views, but then all the new views you add, all the new yeah. logic is is using what in ten, but you can still keep using the the existing code that you have without making almost any changes at all. Yeah. So this is the customer form from that project, and it's yeah. using these old what in yeah. This is what in seven, and then we have the main view here. Yeah. which is using flow components. Yeah, this is exactly the same as we already implemented, except one line of code changed. If you scroll down a little bit. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, no, actually up a little bit. No, where is it hiding? We okay. have the customer form there. Yeah. And, and it's probably it's, something that we... Yeah, there purchase. it is. Yeah. Yeah, so we don't just add that through a legacy wrapper component. So that's a Vardin 10 component that takes as its content a Vardin 7 component and integrates things through that. And yeah. that's all you need to do to be able to. Yeah. So basically we are having, for example, here in the button click listener, we are just calling directly this yeah. Vardin 8, Vardin 7 version code. Yes. And, and it works perfectly together. Yep. Yeah. So that's the power of NPR. Uh, well, we didn't have too many questions before. We had something about portlets again, actually. Yeah, should we see if there's some new yeah, form? I will try to reload that. To see. But yeah, I, I can. There was one question in advance about portlet support. So that's also one of the reasons why you wouldn't want to migrate to 10. Yeah. Because if, if you're using port, portals or port, the portlet specification, that's something that we don't yet have support for. We okay now. Be the, careful. The, 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 there's no <laughs> plans for exactly how or when we would add it. Yeah. So that that really depends on like what. Yeah. So if you want to use the Java part of Vardin, you should definitely stay with Vardin 8 still for portlets. So if 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 you want to use yeah. portlets, yeah. Yeah. But if you want to use only the web components, for example. Yeah, in, that's also a good point. That kind of. Part of Vardin 10 is kind of easier to use in portlets because you can use it with pretty much any any kind of UI architecture. So you can use That's our true. Vardin Creed in whatever yeah. UI in, technologies that you are using in yeah. portlets to build your UI yeah. there. But then it's like JavaScript instead of Java code that actually interacts with those components. Yeah. Yeah, but most questions were pretty much, I think, handled during the webinar. Yeah. So if you have any more questions, you can still go to the forum and ask them here. We will have like a closer look of this forum thread for a couple of days if there appears some new questions. There was a question regarding the compatibility with browsers. Oh. Browser compatibility. Yeah. Okay, browser compatibility. Well, that's that's actually didn't change too much from Vardin 8 to Vardin 10. No. But still certain features are quite slow in IE 11 in Vardin 10. I would say that the extreme cases are slower, yeah? yeah. And also if you use multi-platform runtime with Vardin 7, then you also are still restricted by the, the Vardin 10 browser support. So those older browsers that 7 support but 10 doesn't, those can also not be used with MPR. Okay, so, so kind of the, yeah, so MPR requires but in uh, Internet Explorer 11, at least. Yes. Yeah. Because that's what Vardin 10 requires. Yeah. But otherwise, it's 
Yeah. But between 10 and 8, there's no, yeah. no difference in browser support. Yeah. That's quite simple. Yeah. If, Arsene, was there any other questions in the YouTube channel? Questions relevant, relevant questions. Yeah, we don't I want think, to. Uh, everything else was covered already. Yeah, yeah, great. Okay. Then we will finish it up from this time. Yeah. And thank you, Leif, for being here. And thank, thank you, you for, for listening. listening. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.